Hilfiger. This is the Star Report. Uh, Monday afternoon, early evening, wherever you may be. Okay, this is a research edition, uh, so the pace is slower, as you should know. And the topic, not trending, uh, but I do my research sometimes right in front of you guys. So here we go. The Clark Doll Test from the 40s revisited today. And I want to see if there's any type of correlation with respect to my theory. I've, I've got these theories that I discuss with myself. You should know this. I talk to myself every morning as I have done for decades. And I come to conclusions <laughs> with myself. But today, um, this particular topic, uh, the Clark Doll Test. Um, in my community section is a video from 1988 uh, with Dr. Kenneth Clark, okay? And he and his wife, his wife was a doctor also, Mammy Clark, she has since passed on as well. Let me give you some context if you're new to the show, okay? In the 40s, psychologist Kenneth and Mammy Clark designed and conducted a series of experiments known as the Dahl Test to study the psychological effects of segregation on African-American children. Doctors Clark uh, used four dolls identical except for color to test children's racial perceptions. Their subjects... Children between the ages of three to seven were asked to identify both the race of the dolls and which color they prefer, okay? Um, a majority of the children preferred the white doll and assigned positive characteristics to it. The Clarks conducted that prejudice, discrimination, and segregation created a feeling of inferiority among African-American children and damaged their self-esteem. Now, we're going to go and address self-esteem by today's uh, modern terms and things of that nature. But I wanted to lay that out because here we are in 2023, and these groundbreaking tests, in case you don't know, also led to uh, Brown versus the Board of Education, the Supreme Court. These groundbreaking tests, and... I want to zoom in or focus on self-esteem. Now, folks, I'm a high school dropout. I'm a low-budget sociologist. I have no, deg no degrees. I've been a reader all my life. I travel and so on and so forth. So I'm asking myself, and you can chime in at any point in time. Correct me if I'm wrong, or if you think you have a better idea with regards to my theory. I think that self-esteem may still be an issue for younger black children, preteens and teens now. Every group, every culture has their problems, Hispanics, Caucasians, everyone. But I'm focused on young black children. I'm a black man. I may be mulatto, you know, in the uh, technical sense. I live my life as a black man. I tell you I'm color neutral, and I truly believe that because I am limitless. Limitless, but I do know how I am perceived here in America, okay? So, my theory, and I'm using these groundbreaking monumental tests, is that low self-esteem may still be an issue in today's day and time with young black people. This is not to beat up on anybody, but this is to, to at least ask the question, why? Why do we see young people lashing out, tearing things up? I mean, the most vile behavior right in front of our eyes, combined with social media. We've become desensitized to it, but at the same time, what is the issue? What is the root cause? Now, in case you don't know, I am all for reparations. Yes, I am. A debt is owed. A debt is owed. But I'm, I don't know if reparations is going to solve the root problem. I don't know. But again, I'm a low-budget sociologist. I have no degree. I'm just talking out loud, talking to myself. Well, actually, Asia's here with me, uh, my... Um, uh, mannequin head. 
she's a great listener. <laughs> so that's my main topic, the Clark doll test. I'm going to revisit them. Good, eve good afternoon, pardon me, uh, troll babies. You guys know about this test. Yes, no, some of you? They have done different variations over the decades of this test. But the Clark doctors from Harlem, New York, and they conducted these tests in Harlem at first. I think there may be something here as to why we see young people lashing out. It, do they still, not all, I don't want a broad stroke, but a certain core element, do they still have inferiority issues? The dominant genre is urban culture. Never, never mind the music. Don't focus on the music, but urban culture, urban lifestyle. Urban beauty. So what is still the issue? What, what, what prompts the violence? Capitalism is a, is a beautiful system. In case you've never heard me say before, I am a capitalist. But people use capitalism by way of greed. It's a beautiful system, capitalism. Don't ever get that confused with me. Okay, that's my main... Um, Topic, if you want to chime in, I would love for someone, you know, uh, more educated, which uh, most of you are more educated than me, to approach this topic. If you are a parent, have you ever dealt with anything along these lines of this particular um, experiment, test, observation? Do you have daughters, sons, nieces, nephews? Do they prefer something that is not necessarily how you thought? during a point in, in your uh, uh, growth. Everything's different from, from my time, so I, I don't even want to go back. It's just a totally different time. I was born in 1964, proud of my age, proud of my generation, but again, it was different. Very different, okay? Now, showrunner, uh, Terror Squad member Charlie Rock LD has passed away. He's dead. I'm not sure if I ever met him. Doing radio in New York City for the years that I did, I met so many people, and um, um, I met people's entourages. I was always out and about on the set, moving, shaking, and popping, and people remind me, yo, Star, remember we met? I'm like, uh, okay, if you say so. Anyway, he appeared to be a good guy, but I can't speak to his true character, and I'm not going to, uh, in any way, shape, or form, take his side or Fat Joe's side. But I saw a video yesterday, and supposedly, did Fat Joe put up a post and say, God don't like ugly on Instagram? Mm. Deeds, are you out there? Can anybody confirm? Did Fat Joe put up a post and say, God don't like ugly? Now, he put up that post, I'm not sure when. Ooh. They're saying, yeah, he did. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Now, I don't know the details of their relationship, but I do want to at least approach this because of... I'm in the eye of the tornado with regards to, you know, the industry, fame, notoriety, and I've seen people, even people that I knew once upon a time, you know, become my personal haters, now, I move very different from Fat Joe. Fat Joe, who I've spoken to on multiple occasions, called into the Storm and Buckwild show, came into the Storm and Buckwild show. Um, J Joe's a good guy. If you ask me, he's too good to some of the people around him. He's just, you know, buying them homes and cars and shit. I own properties in the Poconos. Yeah, I've told you this before. I, was, I own base houses. <laughs> Built with base materials, cheap Japanese nails, no insulation in the goddamn walls. And Joe had a couple of houses in the Poconos. Um, and he would buy houses for some of the Terror Squad members. And he was such a good person to the point where he eventually went to um, prison, fed prison, which is different from, you know, uh, other prisons, I'll just say that. Giving, giving, taking care of people, 
Now, here's what I want to focus on, and some of you can help me because, again, I don't remember too much about Charlie Rock LD. I, I do know that he was one of the original Terror Squad guys. And on the Star and Buckwild show, we had a lot of love for them. The whole team and my producer, who's still a good friend of mine, Miguel Candelaria. He was an honorary Terror Squad member. Um, I saw Joe say he went to visit Charlie Rock LD. Was it 14 for 14 years? Can someone confirm that? 14 years when he was in the penitentiary. This guy did a lot of penitentiary time. And to his credit, when he finally got out, he was working with uh, uh, inmates, you know, coming home and making the transition back into society. It was a great thing. Condolences to his family. Oh, and, and my, homie, my homie Cuban Link. But how many years did Fat Joe go to see Charlie Rock LD in the penitentiary? I want to ask a question, and this is not a shot at Joe, but this is the objective perspective. Was Charlie Rock LD the terrorist squad hitter? And Fat Joe, you know, believed that, you, you, you know, keep him, keep him close so he doesn't get to talking. Anybody want to chime in on that? Was Charlie Rock LD the hitter? I know there was issues when he finally got out. Charlie Rock LD said Fat Joe gave him an old ass. Um, what, what did he give him? An old Escalade or something? Four months after he came home and, and gave him $1,000. This is not a fat, pardon me, this is not a shot at Joe. But was Joe keeping Charlie Rock LD close because he was living Charlie Rock LD's, living off of Charlie Rock LD's rep? In the streets. Does that make sense or no? Not saying Joe wasn't, you know, a boss. He's a boss. But I didn't know if Joe, you know, was in those streets like, you know, knuckling up with niggas, you know, letting that thing fly. Chime in if you like. Phone lines open right now. Hang on a second. And um, Dana with the data. Dana, if you want to chime in, please do so. This particular topic. Okay, Dana says okay. Hold on, hold on. This topic is important to me. Again, <clears throat> a lot of people may not be up to speed. The Clark Doll Test Revisited 2023. Low self-esteem. Here in the Atlanta metro area, it's violent. It, it's a beautiful place, you know, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of violence down here. Shootings every day. Shootings carjackings, home invasions. We've spoken about this before, but if you are planning to move to the Atlanta metro area, you got to do some research on, on the crime rate in the place that you're planning to move to. Oh, you can be up in the woods in a nice, nice house, huh? Got, got the marble island in the kitchen, fly-ass Anderson windows, patio in the pool. You're sitting there relaxing. <laughs> I'm a fucking margarita <laughs> and a nigger with a stick <laughs> comes into your backyard. <laughs> oh, God. Let me try and pull back on the N-word today. A savage with a stick. Now, the stick is the goddamn... <laughs> that's the assault rifle. A savage just walks up on you. He's got on skinny jeans and some slides talking about you know what it is. Open the safe, <laughs> or I'm going to split your wig. That's how it is out here, okay? All right. Um, let me pull some more of my notes and some other things I want to talk about. Oh, I think that's Dana. Dana, what the data tapping in this afternoon. Dana, how are you? Good hey, evening. I'm good. Can you hear me? Good to hear from you. This is not a trending topic, okay. as you know. I'm not expecting a lot of traffic, maybe few calls, mm -hmm. but... Um, and thank you. You sent me some notes because we were discussing this earlier. Um, this very famous test experiments where the young black children were, for the most part, picking uh, the white dolls 
um, over the black dolls, the questions were, which doll is bad? Bad. And all of the little black kids pointed to the black doll. Where do you want to chime in? Right. Um, I, I just have a theory, but I'm all over the place. What do you, what do you want to say? Well, <clears throat> um, so that, that test, the doll test, you know, is very real um, even today. Um, and yes, and this test was conducted in the 1930s and it was used in the Supreme Court Brown versus Board mm -hmm. in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. um, even before this test, um, and this is let, let's just say this is this is coming out of the black community here in America, black okay. people. Before this test, we had the brown paper bag test, mm -hmm. and that could actually be actually be traced back into slavery when you had a lot of children, you know, who fathers were the masters or a white man, and the way they were treated compared to the field and the house Negroes, mm -hmm. that type of thing. That never ended. That spilled over to, you know, in reconstruction mm -hmm. using brown paper bag tests for sororities, fraternities, churches, and, you know, all types of things, even ad admissions into college, right? So if you already have that, and that's more psychological. So I would say that's a psychological deficit, and that's across the social economic board. Because um, you're saying, you know, violence. Well, hang, hang on a second, Dana. Um, you took it back to slavery. I'm, I'm talking about children. Yes, the test started in the 30s, but they picked up traction in the 40s. And it, children who are at that young stage where, where they can be programmed and the, the self-esteem full analysis that came out of these particular uh, tests and the experiment itself... Mm -hmm. It has proven by way of the data to show that self-esteem was an issue for, you know, for, for, for integration, segregation. So I'm just asking a question now. I mean, we can come back to the brown paper bag test, but I want to focus on the children and these tests. Do you think, and I could be reaching, there's any correlation to young people today having low self-esteem issues. What is all the goddamn fighting about and the outburst? That's where I'm going. Yeah, I don't, okay, so your correlation is this doll test and today, which yes, is still relevant today psychologically in the youth um, because that is passed down between generation to generation. So mind you, when you saying this test was conducted on children, and why is it that children are identifying with the black doll being bad or less than compared to the white or the lighter skin? Mm -hmm. Because it's already embedded in them to think that way because where they come from. You see what I'm saying? Which does trace back brown paper bag slavery, whatever. But let's just fast forward. Um, violence has to do with socioeconomics, like you being poor. And then also in 2023, when we technology with social media, that's making uh, all the youth go crazy. So is it coming out of having low self-esteem? Yes. Social media, um, that, the data has come out that does causes young people mm. to have low self-esteem dealing okay. with social media. Okay. Can you trace it back to the doll test? Most likely because it never went away. Okay, let me jump in for a second, Dana. Let me just read something to you. I've got a bunch of notes here. Um, the Clarks, uh, the two doctors, uh, uh, Jonathan Clark, uh, Kenneth, pardon me, Kenneth Clark and his wife, Mammy Clark, okay? Hold on, hold on, I want to read this. Uh, the Clarks asked the children, we know that, uh, but to the Clarks, these tests provided proof that segregation gave African-American children a sense of inferiority. Now, we have been saying, many people over the decades, well, you know, um, integration was the worst thing for black people. These tests say that segregation gave the black children a sense of inferiority. So now, how, do, how does that, in today's day and time, if, if at all, don't agree with me, I'm, I'm asking myself, how does this, in today's day and time, play out? Uh, sh with the rise of black schools, homeschooling will black children ha have more of a self low self-esteem issue 
I don't know. You see, you see where I'm trying to go. I'm trying to go there. I don't know. Yeah, because I, I, disag- I disagree. I disagree with your correlation with violence, right? Okay. That maybe this is the cause of violence because of low self-esteem. Okay. Um, because it's, it's, I disagree with that because it's more bigger than that. Because you have people on a high social economic scale, black people, and they psychologically have the psychological deficit of the doll test. Okay. You know, so. One of the things with um, Dr. Clark and his wife, this was used for Brown. They use this as in, in the Brown versus Board because they're saying mm-hmm. segregation, yes. you know, causes black children to feel more inferior. Yeah. But he also had a problem because what the Supreme Court failed to realize, it affects white children too. So is it just a black thing? No, it's not. But why is it that why do children then and now still feel the darker you are, the more inferior you are. Let me jump in there, there for a second. And Alpha Villain, sir, I see you in the live chat. Do you want to call in? Do you have any um, input on this? Alpha Villains, he's got a great YouTube channel. Um, he, he may have some input on this. If you want to call in, sir, shoot me an email. Let's get you on the line. Um, to, to your point, Dana, uh, the Clarks did address white students and... Uh, the reason why segregation or, or, or black students learning together was not working, having being segregated, because white students need to also be taught that they are not superior to black kids. Did, did you catch that part? Right. No, no, no. Right. No, I, I just I, I agree with that. I'm just saying that he was he was dismayed with the Supreme Court for not citing the white children, how it impacts white white children. It okay. was just the Supreme Court was just focused on the black children. Okay. But yes, OK, it, it, it does affect white children, too. And, and also that's passed down for generation, generation until today, because white people have that power complex. Because of, you know, how this nation was built. That never went away. Okay. So, psychologically, all I'm saying is psychologically, nothing hasn't changed or very much improved to make the grounds equally. Yeah, hold on a second, Dana. Um, Deeds, can you um, reach out in the live chat to whoever you're referring to? I got to focus on this particular topic. Um, and Alpha Villains, I got your, your live chat, sir. Thank you for tapping in. Okay, so again, Dana, this is just me talking to myself, thinking out loud. Um, fast forward, fast forward. Here we are. And, and, and the, the, the issue, the issue of not just violence, but, you know, outburst. Outburst, a certain way of conducting oneself. Maybe if not violence on one another, I saw a video of a young black girl, and I'm concerned about black kids, you know, tearing shit up. She just, and I said, Jesus, she looks like the woman who uh, a couple of months ago was up in a goddamn Miami airport tearing the computer off the goddamn uh, the counter. Girls up in Chuck E. Cheese tearing shit up, uh, up in Walmart tearing shit up. That has nothing to do with low self-esteem, in your opinion? Um, it, it probably does. It has to do with low self-esteem, anger management problems, and a whole bunch of other mental um, problems. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But again, when, we, when we're talking about media, social media, and the technology, they, they only use black faces and black videos of black people, you know, misbehaving and acting crazy because there are a whole lot yeah. of white people that do the same thing. But, but, wait a minute, but because they are portrayed in the media as not doing that, going back to this test, then society, particularly white people, think, you know, I don't have that problem. That's a black problem because I'm better. Knowing that they're doing the same same thing or somebody in their family or their kids are doing it. So, you know, I don't buy that this this doll test is, a, is, is an issue just on black children. Because it does affect white children, and they okay. do misbehave okay. probably at a higher rate. If I can just say this, Dana, I hear what you're saying. Again, I'm not trying to beat up on black children. I'm concerned. I want to know what is the goddamn issue. Hold on a second. Somebody wants to tap in with this. Uh-oh. 
Uh, Gene Richmond, I want to stay focused on topic. Are, are you there with us? Hello? Yes, two, 203. Are you there? Yes, I am here. How are you doing today? Okay, I thought you today. were number nine. Can you hold on a second? Sit tight, sit tight. Okay, that's oh, wow. number uh, 203 area call. Number nine, are you calling in? All right. Um, I'm sorry, Dan. I'm, I'm doing so many things here. <laughs> Okay, so okay. M maybe there is no correlation to what I'm just thinking out loud, but I mean, I, I don't think reparations <laughs> is going to ne necessarily solve uh, w what's going on in America. There, there's a problem, and, and I hear what you're saying, but I'm not concerned with uh, Caucasian problems, Asian problems, Hispanic okay. problems. <laughs> you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad used to say, police yourselves so the white man doesn't have to. I'll let you finish up and promote what's coming up on your, your platform. Take your time, Dana. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I didn't want to be rushed off this quickly because oh, okay. it's a good, it's well, a well, in-depth conversation. Well, stay there. Well, well, stay there then. Stay okay. there. Hang, hang on. Uh, Gene Richmond wants a piece of the action, but uh, number nine, let's stay focused. Let's have an intelligent conversation. Is that you, sir? Gene Richmond. Yes, yeah, me. Thank you. Um, I don't think you need to instruct me on, on a style of conversation to have, but, but thank okay, you. okay. Where do you want to chime in, sir? Dana's on the line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Dana. How are you? Hi. How passe? How passe? How passe? All that. Well, I, you know, to to answer the question about the topic, I think there's a huge self-esteem problem uh, in the black community, primarily, but with young black girls, like you said, Star, you, you can see a various amount of videos of them thrashing and destroying things, fighting in the street, causing all kinds of havoc. Uh, tests have been shown. You talk about the doll test. There is a low self-esteem with uh, young black girls primarily in our society because they don't feel adequate enough to what is portrayed in the media, what is portrayed as uh, so-called natural beauty. Many of them just don't believe they don't feel that feel that criteria. So I do think it's a psychological and emotional uh, deconstruction of the uh, the young black woman's psyche. If okay, you will. okay, okay. I'm I'm referring to the test because these were two doctors that did extensive research. Uh, I, I you know I'm not smart enough to to challenge their work. All I have is time on my side. You know things have changed since then, but they proved. They proved that self-esteem was an issue, and thus the reason why you know certain laws and policies were put into place. Um, Dana, back to you. You wanted to say something in response to what I said, or what, Dana? Yeah. yeah so low, low self-esteem. It, it to me the that that's inherited. So when we're talking about this doll test and the low self-esteem and inferiority of black children then and today, that is inherited. And then it's continued to be passed down. So the thing is, and you're right, reparations cannot, especially when we're talking about money, allocating money out, that's not going to solve this um, mental psychology aspect of feeling inferior, inferior, you know, the dog test. Reparations can't repair that unless it's something very specific and then you can't force somebody. So it's something that really has to be um, relearned or unlearned and, it, you know, and it, it starts in the home. It starts in the family. Number nine, we have some noise in the background. Gene Richmond, can you make the adjustments? Well, well hang on, Dana. I don't want to just dump all this on reparations. Again, I believe African-Americans, ADOS, FBA deserve reparations. That was just something I was trying to uh, look to with regards to society. And again, young Young people, middle school, high school, there, there's no shame anymore. There's no shame. Number nine, back to you. Right. you. You had some other points, number nine? Well, yes, uh, I agree. Like you said, there is no shame anymore. We live in the, we are in the heights of the digital age. And we are in the heights of uh, lack of accountability. And we are in the height of this idea where you can be what you want to be, who you want to be, and however you want to do it. And again, this goes back to psychology, pathology, and an emotional response. And it seems like the young blacks, uh, primarily women, are on the lowest of that totem pole. 
there is no young black woman worship uh, in this country. So, you know, they turn to this uh, rabid and out of control way. It, it, it's all psychological and I believe uh, more so emotional because hmm. the lack of what they're lacking in their personal lives. Okay. What they're lacking in their personal lives or from what, they, what they're lacking from what they didn't get from their family, from their parents. Because if you look at the people who are behaving that way, and it's not just black women, it's boys too, girls, boys, women, you know, and men. But if you look at their family history, I'm pretty sure their mother or their father behaved the same way. This is something that is learned from the time you were born. Well, the, the, let, let's okay. You know what? Let's let's get down to the nitty gritty. This is this is more of an issue with Black American women. Mm. Let's just get down. Let's just cut the small talk. Let's go. This is a Black American. Let's go. This is a Black American problem. You're not you're not finding this with a uh, uh, Caribbean based Black women, and you're not finding this with with Africans. This is a what you what you people call foundational Black problem. This is this isn't my problem. I'm just here. I'm just here to help you. So I don't need well, the heavy you're... talk and trying to tell me what. What's, what's, yeah. what? You, what, what well, yeah. hang on, D- Dana. Let number nine talk. Let him. Let's go, number nine. Turn up. Put your okay, foot on the gas. No, no, no. Let's so go. I know. I, I, I got a lot of respect for you, Dana. Me and you work together. We're friends. I got a lot of respect yeah. to you, but I don't need. I don't need the heavy talk telling me. You know. Oh, it could be this. It could be that. This is not a Caribbean black situation. Nor is it an African black situation. Mm. These girls that you see on these videos acting this way are black American or foundational black American, whatever that means. That is that is directly with your tribe. Mm. So I want to give no. you, I want to mm-hmm. I, I want to help you understand your people. This is a this is a black American issue, and you're fi- like you said, this is something that's coming from the home, and there's a, a serious uh, epidemic of damaged homes within the foundational black. American structure. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, hang on a second. I want to address uh, some mm-hmm. cash apps. I'll be right back. Sit tight. Uh, Troy, I got your donation, sir. Thank you very much. You sent me an email earlier. Thank you, Troy. I got it. Um, he says, which doll, w- okay. which doll would a bean eater pick? Well, so we're talking about the test that was conducted, a monumental test. I, I don't know w- w- which doll. Being it uh, would pick, but uh, thank you for your your donation. Blade, blade tapping in via Cash App. Marshmallow test and impulse control. Okay, thank you, Blade. Uh, Blade also says Terra Squad made Miguel an honorary member? Question mark. I hope they didn't make snitch ass nigga Angel Lopez, aka Star, an honorary member as well. Now, it, listen, Joe's a good guy, but uh, again, when he came on the show. <laughs> I asked him about my homies in the Latin Kings. He said, nah, nah, I didn't, I, I'm not down with that. Quote, unquote, I'm not down with that. So no, I wasn't trying to be down with Terror Squad, but uh, salute to his team, all the originals. And again, uh, condolences to um, uh, um, Charlie Rock LD's family, okay? Um, hold on, guys, hold on. Troy G also sent me a, okay, I got your email, Troy. I'll look at that later, sir. Thank you, thank you. And one more cash app, and then we'll get... Hey, Janet, are you on the line? Okay, Janet wants a piece of the action. Janet, hold on until either number nine or Dana's off the line, and I'll bring you in. Dana, um... I want to... Go ahead. You I'm have gonna the floor. I'm going to respond to number nine. Come on. Because, honey, you're not going to say all of that and think that I'm not going to have no pushback because you're a whole lie. You're a, you're, you're a liar. Come on. Because Come we on. don't know all the, when we <laughs> see the, the black men and women with these outbursts, a lot of them are Caribbean and African. When you look throughout the deep diaspora, especially in different countries in Africa, they're bleaching their skin. Mm. They got the, the weaves and the wigs. And when we look at Haiti right now, you've been colonized by the French, the British, British and now the United States is is basically, you know, a, a mess over there. So for you to sit up here and say we foundational ADOS are the only ones with this problem, you're lying because the data shows that this is something that has affected black people, period, throughout the diaspora since we were put on shape slips and dropped off the hemisphere. You guys over there have issues with color. You guys over there have issues when it comes to status of um, class, the caste system, and that's all through um, South America as well. So don't just make it seem like this is a black American issue, because it's not. So, you know, you what do you call it? Um, trolling. You're just trolling. So that's... that's <laughs> 
<laughs> not true. No, actually, I'm, I'm not trolling. I'm not trolling. We learned it from you. If 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 we if there was a dilemma, we learned it from you. We learned it from you. you. Me. No, hold on. We learned it from you for what you were doing in the project. We learned it from you what you were doing in the inner cities. Remember, we weren't here three three hundred years ago, were we? You you're trying no, But you were so living in the D- Dana, let him speak. Dana, let him respond. Let him respond. Please, Dana, go ahead. My tribe listen, hold on. Hold on. My tribe was leading a revolution that revolutionized the Western Hemisphere. Ooh. You know, three three hundred years ago. Uppercut. So we and, learned and it how did that from work you. Out? How did that we work out? We learned it from you. Wait, after- okay. D- Dana, let him speak. Let him speak. Dana, we let you speak. Let him speak, please. Go ahead. Look, 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 my friend, I can't control imperialism and globalist rule. But what I can say, what, what I can say is the foundational black image was the blueprint for all other black societies to follow. Mm. But the thing is, what we, what, what we didn't do was follow your lead. While you were uh, thrashing Walmarts and thrashing in the streets and rioting, we took what you guys established and ran with it. You see what I mean? We took it. You guys, you guys set it up. We took it and ran with it. Okay. okay. You didn't so build anything. Is, so what I'm saying is we, we took your blueprint and modified it. We learned from you. You and guys are the forefathers. It. And we took it and ran with it. All I right, guys, hold on a second. Um, Haran, I got your donation. Haran says a community, I wanna, I need to, a community is only as strong as the self-esteem of its men. We discussed the self-esteem of black women, yet uh, we refrain from uh, mentioning the esteem issues of black men. There are a number of black men that seek white validation. Very good point, very good point. All right, guys, I got some other calls coming in. Dana, stay with me. Number nine, let's let you finish up. I thank you for uh, chiming in. Dana, stick with me. Uh, Final thoughts on this topic, number nine, the uh, the Clark Dahl test from the 40s. Well, I just want to say these tests have validity to them. And the real issue is if we don't get down to another root cause of this problem, which is the lack of family values, the lack of moral character, and the lack of a specific group really morphing this kind of behavior, then the problem will never be solved. It's psychological and it's emotional, but you got to look at the specific group who is involved in these issues. Okay. And it's unfortunate to see this day and age that young black women cannot comport themselves at an honorable and a valuable way. Thank mm. you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your call. Dana, sit tight. Sit tight. Um, I think that is Alpha Villains tapping in. If it is, can you hold Alpha Villains? Sit tight. I'll be right back. Um, also, guys, on the screen, please check out my sponsors. Okay, YouTube, at Ivan, Q U I N. I-C-K, pardon me, okay? Brand new video in my community section. Go check him out. Tell him I sent you, okay? And paperworkparty.org. Going to get them back on the line, possibly tomorrow, Wednesday at the latest. Paperworkparty.org. They've got a link. Uh, or we've got a link in my community section to their latest video as well, all right? Um, Alpha Villains, is that you, sir? Area code 954. Yes, good afternoon, Star. How you doing? Hey, man, good to hear from you. I have Dana on the line from The Real Dana on YouTube. Do you guys know each other? I'm familiar with Dana's work. How you doing, Dana? Okay, okay. Hi, okay. how are you? So um, good, the, the, the topic this afternoon, not a trending topic, Alpha Villains. I'm just talking to myself as I do in the mornings when I sip my coffee, exploring a theory based upon the, the monumental, the classic, uh, the Clark Dahl test from the 40s. And I'm just asking the question, is low self-esteem still an issue with young black people today? Where do you want to chime in? Sure. I I think that's a great topic. I think it's very prevalent. Um, I think definitely there is a lot of low self-esteem when it comes to melanated people. um, And we don't know how to deal with it. I mean, you could talk about programming, social media, the television, et cetera. Coincidentally, I was watching a classic movie yesterday, um, Teen Wolf, and it's, it's, you know, it's predominantly white. It's mm-hmm. a movie that I grew up on, 
And it kind of bothered me being, you know, a man of my age because there were really no representation of black. So me being a black man looking at the movie, reminiscing, (laughs) I didn't see any representation. So, yeah, so, you know, (laughs) when we talk about young people um, not having low self-esteem, we don't know how to deal with it because when you are confident as a man, they tell you to, to humble yourself. They usually misconstrue confidence with a chip on your shoulders, especially right. if you're in corporate America. So, yeah, there's definitely an issue uh, with low self-esteem. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just asking and I'm wondering, and I want to make it clear again, uh, all cultures have, have their own issues, uh, problems, you know, yep. set, setbacks and speed bumps, if you will. But this, uh, I just, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, what, what is the, the deep, deep-rooted issue, if any? Dana, do you want to chime in again? Where's Dana at? Yeah, well, um, I, I I think he said he watched that movie Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. Was it Teen yeah, Wolf? yeah. Yeah, um, I actually like that movie with Michael J. Fox. <laughs> right, right. It's a classic. It is a classic, but um, so I didn't have like an issue with it or felt like I couldn't identify. But you know, that's just me. But again, I just think this is a deep rooted issue that has been passed down from generation to generation particularly when it comes to the black community and we're not doing anything to reverse that. Cause I don't think we are conscious of it. And just to piggyback a little bit, this is not um, a black American um, thing. You have slums and dirty feet in the Caribbean and in South America and different countries in Africa. This is something. Well, h- hang on, Dana. No, 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 no. I'm focused primarily on here. I don't care what's going on in Brazil. I don't care what's going on in Puerto Rico. I'm asking the question about low self-esteem and the possibility of any type of connection uh, from these tests and here. Go ahead. Right. Here in America is just constantly being perpetuated because whether you're a black immigrant coming here or foundational black Americans here, we all play into it. Okay. So again, this is something that is inherited. It's, it's, it's embedded in our society, and we're not doing anything to unlearn it and reverse it. You know what I'm saying? And start thinking. So how do we? D- 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 Dana, 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 how do we undo it? Tell me. I'm dying to know. How do we undo it? I mean, you got to start understanding that your work, you have to start actually, you know, do, making sure that you're doing better and uplifting where you live at in your community. What other groups are doing here in America, mm-hmm. and then I'm, 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 look, I'm taking this from a social construct, when you have the Hispanic or Latin community or Asian or even white community, they are working together as a collective. We don't like each other because we don't like ourselves. So, you know, you have to mentally get yourself together internally and we really have to start working together collectively. Okay, so, so, h- hang on a second. So is this fight a lost cause? These tests, which started in the 30s, picked up traction in the 40s. We're now in 2023. And and again, I'm I'm concerned. I don't want to hear about what uh, Asians, uh, Cubans, Colombians are doing. I'm I'm here in the Atlanta metro area, and shit is so real here. I want to get out. I'm getting out in in, in August. I'm in a a beautiful (laughs) home in Woodstock. (laughs) When I come out my right. driveway, I got Karuchi, my AR-15 in the back seat with 90 <laughs> rounds of ammunition. Right. I don't want to live like that. So let me, Hang on, go ahead, jump in, Alpha Villains. Well, jump well, in. Hang on, Dana, let him speak. Let Alpha Villains jump okay. in, please. Let me, re- real quick. Um, take um, your time. I think Haran take your time. Real- no rush, take your time. Okay. Okay, so I think Haran made a really good point. I think part of the solution is to stop looking for validation outside of your community stop looking for validation for people who don't necessarily look like you Bingo. like when you do business mm-hmm. with people you know what i mean like a lot of people we talk about this pro black stuff but a lot of people would rather do business with somebody that doesn't look like them because we have a history or a stigma of not being trustworthy right so you uh, somebody would rather do a loan with somebody who is a caucasian perhaps versus uh, their own people right so that's the first step bro you have to kind of figure out stop looking for validation and it does like Dana says it is inherited it starts with the, the families a lot of families are broken as a result of that, and remember, we don't necessarily have good "quote unquote" role models. We talked. I think number nine mentioned women um, and their poor self-esteem. You have all these rappers 
that are promoting things. It's nothing new, but it's still not good role models. And when you try to be a good role model, nobody's paying attention to nobody it. They cares. want premium black news. So right. it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue, man. It's a, it's a vicious right. cycle. <laughs> Facts on top right, of facts. It's a vi- oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Dana. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, yeah, it's a vicious cycle. And then it's like, no, we should not want to be other people. But why is it that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that is our behavior? And and what you're right. saying, what what are the solutions? The solutions is learning how to work together, organizing together, you know, liking one another. But how do you do that? Yeah, a check isn't going to make that happen. How do you like I another don't black know. person and I and trust them well, enough to honestly, build up your community? D- Dana, I appreciate you on so many different levels, but I'm I'm as serious as colon cancer. I don't know. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Well, you know I ride around <laughs> again. I ride around. I grip up every day. I got a bulletproof vest in the goddamn trunk <laughs> of my of my Bentley. Right. <laughs> I'm not worried about a white guy shooting up Publix. I'm not worried about about some type of Puerto Rican shooting up Walmart. I'm worried about young black kids. Alpha villains jumping in. You want you to know say what? something? I think you know <laughs> what I think that the, you know. Aside from aside from the solution, I think everyone needs to start small. We need to start worrying about watering our own lawn. We need to learn how to be the proof, right? A lot of people talk about, you know, you want to be, you want to, if you want to attract a certain type of energy, you want to be that energy. So at the end of the day, I think we need to really focus on internal stuff that you can actually control. Your kids, you got lawn, don't worry about what everyone else is doing. It's not going to happen overnight. But Dana says we got to like each other and help each other. But that's unfortunately not necessarily realistic because there's a lot of greasy people. And it's not just limited to black people. But at the end of the day, we all have to look out for ourselves and develop healthy goals and employ and encourage healthy egos. They don't want people who are melanated to have egos, a healthy ego. I know, Star, you're right. ego-driven. ego-driven. A lot of people have to learn how to be that. And I think right. it's very healthy, but a lot of people are discouraged to have healthy egos, especially right. black men. Right, right. Hey, um, yeah. before you go, Alpha I Village, agree. before you go, tell us what's going yeah. on on your platform. There's a link uh, in my community section to your channel. What, what, what was your last video, and what do you got coming up, please? Alpha Villains. I appreciate you start. Yeah, so today we did a show. I got a, a morning show, guys. Uh, finish your breakfast with a finish your breakfast show with AV. Today we did a show called Why Your Dreams Without Goals Are Just Dreams. Okay. Tomorrow we're going to talk about stop telling your kid that you are proud of them. And basically we're just addressing some topics and looking at things through a male's perspective. Okay. Um, d- d- do you ever focus on lesbian lesbians? Dykes and bull da- and, and bull daggers. I'm just, just... you know, Star, man, the, this algorithm is so tricky, man. I would love to do it, man, but because I'm trying to find my footing, I don't, I don't want to even touch that. I don't want that. Well, smoke, Star. you don't necessarily have to say it like I said it. That's old lingo, but you know, do you ever focus on seafood platter eaters, a fur burger, liquors? <laughs> You know, anything. No, but that might be Thursday show. Okay. You know, any, any, anything um, by way of uh, some of those beautiful people that may be uh, challenging uh, heterosexual men like yourself, like me, and, and, yeah, gaining, right. tr- and gaining traction. They, they're gaining traction. They're, they're, they're involved in Father's Day now. Whoo, it's crazy yeah. out there. Crazy out there. Yeah, they're definitely lapping us. I'll definitely take that into consideration, Star. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, good to hear from you. Thank you for tapping in. Guys, go to Alpha Villains on YouTube. If you can't find the link, go to my community section. He's right there. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Okay. Dana, stay with me, Dana. Um, We have a couple of calls lined up. Guys, sit tight. I'm going to finish up with Dana. She really helped me out this morning. And also on the screen, youtube.com forward slash at Jersey's Concrete. Go check them out. Brand new footage. He's got some crazy stuff up there, which I can't mention on my show. Dana, let's go back to this brown paper bag test that you mentioned earlier. There is a lot of validity to those historical tests by way of uh, fraternities, sororities, um, the damage that they have done and continue to do. Do you think that... um, that, that, that that's passed on uh, and also in the minds of young black children and, and got them all twisted up. Um, the brown paper bag test. 
please. <clears throat> yes. Um, just to answer a question, yes. It, 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 um, as far as the brown paper bag test, twisted the minds of adults, which they passed down onto, on, uh, onto their children. Um, so if you, and that was already in existence before um, Dr. Clark um, and his wife created the, yes. the doll test, right? Yes, yes. But, um, but it, 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 it's, it's all correlated with each other. But just, I just want to say, because you, what are the solutions? And honestly, you're right. I don't know, but I, I will say this for sure, right? Um, how you do it, but Frederick Douglass once said it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Uh-oh. And I feel as though to reverse this, to make it better, is to reinvest in our youth, when black America. Just focus on the youth because what, when you look at the LGBTQ organization, what are they doing? They're focusing on the youth because it's easier to build up a young person's mind to what you want it to be as an adult. So we need to take the initiative, and especially with our young black boys and men, uh, the young black boys, and reinvest in them. And that's the only way to mm-hmm. help remedy the doll test and, the, and brown paper bag um, psychology. I got I got to throw you a curveball, Danny. You know, I, I got respect for you. But um, um, do you remember that white woman that Frederick Douglass married after after being married to that black woman? black woman all those years that's okay <laughs> but you didn't that's okay because the black hang, woman, hang on the black hang on woman. hang on dan but you do know frederick Douglass married a white woman you know when it was all said and done I do know, after yeah. the black after his black <laughs> wife passed away he married a, a white woman who had connections and was down for the call well well it's well different. well 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 dana did she pass away or did he slip her a little a little poison to get her the fuck up out of there no, he did not. How do, how no. do you know? How do you know? Don't play with me. <laughs> how, how do you know? How do you know? <laughs> how you know? Because how do you know he did? That, that's not written. Because I'm a reader. So, because, no. Because I'm a reader. I'm a reader. No. Okay. Where did you read that at? Please cite your sources because that was uh, never written nowhere. He oh, didn't. Oh, he didn't pay her off to divorce her. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. Um, I, I can send you a link. I don't know how 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 much validity there is to it, but I can send you a link. Yeah. He may have killed yeah, her. Send me the link so, so okay. I could debunk that, but that's not true. His wife passed on. Right. <laughs> he married a white woman that was down yeah. for the call, honey, yeah. and yeah. had connections. Yeah. He said, all, all that bliggity black shit was cool, but, you know, I got, I got myself a pink tone now, a snowflake. You know, <laughs> shit is different, you know. <laughs> You are so messy. You are too messy. <laughs> hey, tell us what's going on on your channel this evening. You and uh, Judge Joe Brown was cracking. Yes. Yeah, so today, every Monday is Man Up Mon- Monday with Judge Joe Brown. His Man Up podcast. That's at six p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So go to the Real Dana on YouTube and subscribe and tune in tonight. And actually, you know, tonight's topic is, you know, what is the value of a man? Hmm. Um, so I think that, you know, that's a good discussion amongst other things that are trending. Absolutely. And uh, one more thing, because I, I know you don't like birthdays, but I just want to say happy birthday to my father. He turned 70 oh. years old oh, today. Okay, got yeah. you. I'll let you do that. Yeah, I thought you were going to say something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Thank you so much. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye, Bye now. Okay. Dana with the data tapping in. Okay, we're having a good discussion here, folks. Uh oh. Janet, can you hold on one second? I'll be right back. Stay there, Janet. You're up next. Okay. Let me go to Cash App. Thank you, folks, for joining the research discussion here. Pedro, I got your donation. Pedro says most gangs in New York are Hispanic or Caribbean. That's a fact. That's a whole fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, Janet's on hold. Sir Shy, got you donations, sir. Star, I'm canceling Skylar Saunders. Uh, okay, well, he's in the live chat. You, you guys can, can go back and forth. <laughs> Skylar's a good guy. Um, okay, 626, sit tight. You're up next. CVR, sit tight. Janet, is that you, Area Code 973? Janet. Hey, Star, how are you? Hey, thank you for being patient. I sent you an email earlier to tell you to let you know where I was going. I'm just thinking out loud, doing a little research. I have no 
solid proof, I'm just asking myself is, uh, does low self-esteem have anything to do with today's young black people being over the top, just, just outburst of, of violence, um, self-hatred, attacking each other? A any correlation uh, to, the, to the Clark doll test or am I just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? It's a hundred percent, and you you are correct. Mm. But the word, the phrase that we're missing here is self-awareness. See, the symbolism of a black person and the word black through the history of the United States of America has okay. been always negative. It was never proactive. Okay. Okay. So if if you look at the history of um, you know we're gonna go, people say, oh, you go way back. No, that's only two generations back. Okay. You know, uh, uh, for my age, okay, for my age. So what I'm I'm saying is, if you look at what happened, they had they had slaves beating each other to death. They had they did everything they could. Now, if I look at the fact that they had to create the Geneva Convention for military people that was tortured in wars, that apply that same Geneva Convention to the black man, black person, black woman in the United States of America. Because we have never been through any psychological mending, nor emotional. We have just been let loose. And when we were let loose, quote unquote, from um, being enslaved, we took those ideas that were um, embedded within us and we created them among ourselves because it was taught to us things such as the Blue Vein Society. Okay, now hang on a second, Jenna. I need you to bring it up to today's modern time so we this don't go. Is where I'm going. Okay, what, so that what? we don't go too far into a rabbit hole. Um, again, I'm just okay. asking myself I, I, there's got to be an issue today that prompts. Young black people, right. and, and I want to focus true. on young black people. Never mind Hispanics. Never mind whites. Or wh whites are, are are out of control as well. But what is it th that is is causing the young black children? I mean, maybe maybe there's not one or two things. Maybe it's a it's it's a whole a lot of stuff. I'm asking about low self esteem. Star, as I stated again, you're missing a phrase with this self esteem. It's self it's self-awareness self -awareness. in black america right now currently is still being taught that they are subhuman they're still being taught they've they, they have been taught this literally symbol and symbolically okay this stuff is still embedded this things is still in doctrine okay. this stuff is still in the public school private school colleges you understand what i'm saying Today i hear you. Is 2023 I hear and you. we still have we still have separation and we're still showing in the separation if you take the grammys or you take the oscars you take the bet awards we're still saying to ourselves that the bts is less than the other two why right it's because we have been indoctrinated we haven't been we haven't given a chance that we every time we try to teach our children who they are where they are the beginnings of time, how tall they are, how how great they are, how beautiful they are, how wonderful they are. We are being told that we cannot do these things. Okay, so let me jump in so that we, again, try to put some solutions. Like Hang on. Janet, 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 let's try and put some solutions on the table if, if we can. So how do... The solutions... How does society? How does society? I can't speak for all of society. How does society uh, head into the right direction? I don't think you can correct anything, you know, uh, overnight, and certainly you can't do it within a, a couple of months or years. How do you ha start heading in the right direction? Well, CRT, critical race theory. Mm. Let's tell the truth. Let's finish the sentences. We had so many people go against that CRT because they say, oh, they're just going to teach that we were slaves and we, didn't, and we didn't have this and we didn't have that. No, CRT is more than that. You know, you, you, I never promote my YouTube channel because I don't do nothing but just put up movies and, you know, my writings. But I did a extensive investigation going back millenniums of the black race and the human race, and it's up there. 
You know, S- for anybody send me a banner. In full of sight. D- Janet, p- go ahead, promote what? it now. Listen, I want you to promote your channel promote now. My channel because Jan- I'm Janet. doing something different with my channel. Okay, but listen, mm-hmm. if you want to promote it, send me a, a banner or, or tell me what to put in the show runner because, you know, people listen to you. I like for you to talk, but uh, let's, let's finish this up because I want to shift gears. I want to get back to some of my mm-hmm. other topics as I, uh, uh, you know, flush these things out. Please. Right. So the only thing I'm saying is start with the base of knowledge. You understand? And start with research. It starts with someone actually caring. Because we say we get to CRT. You say, well, the blue vein, blame, the blue vein society was way back then. No, it's still here today. Okay. It's still here today. It's the same people that say, no, I don't want to be reminded that my people were enslaved. Yes, you should. And then you should ask yourself, what were they before they were enslaved? Okay. You should ask the question. You should finish the statement. Okay. And that's the only thing I'm saying. And as far as the diaspora, anywhere you go in the world today, even in the darkness of Africa, Africa you're still going to find that the black woman is disrespected because not only did the colonizers do it over here in every land, they did it in every continent. Okay. So- J- Janet, I want to focus on America. I appreciate your knowledge, but I want to focus on America. But thank you, Janet. Thank, thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Okay. Whew. Okay, folks, we are cooking. We're cooking here this afternoon. CVR, Yo, sit tight. Sit tight. Up. I'll be right back, sir. Sit tight. Sit tight. Okay. Gotta take a quick breath. Whoo! Hey, Janet can work you. Who shall? Who shall? Guys on the screen, please make sure you check out the homie Devious J on YouTube. Fire content. Fire editing skills, okay? Devious J, do you have a brand new video? You've got credit with me, sir. Anything uh, you want me to repost? Devious J. For you, sir, we will repost older videos from two years ago. Did you shoot me an email? Hang on, folks, I'm getting my wine. <clears throat> Get my wine together here, okay? All right. Um, guys, at the top of the live chat is my PayPal information for those of you who ask from time to time, okay? Support today's show via PayPal, and don't forget to hit the like button. Starboyradio at gmail.com. I say again, starboyradio at gmail.com. Okay, Um, and let me just go to PayPal real quick over here on this uh, side of the, uh, uh, Marshall Bussington III. I find myself becoming an admirer of Sir Jean Richmond. I too indulge in the touch of the soft yet firm buttocks (laughs) of an eager man. (laughs) Okay, okay. Uh, thank you for your donation. Uh, CVR, is that you, area code 626, on a Monday? Yo, Star. Hey. Yo, Star, what's up, what's up? What's up, man? How Yo, are you? Yo, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm, glad I get to fall, I'm glad I get to follow Janet, you know what I'm saying? Come on. I always like hearing her voice on the line. I love to see a picture, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, yo, I'm about to get to this topic. Please. By the way, when it, when it comes out to the sponsors that you mentioned as well, too, you, you remember when I was... um. When I was doing the, well, you probably don't remember, but I used to, like, run a banner on your show in regards to, like, hip-hop work that I do because I did a couple of, like, the Freestyle Fridays and things of that nature, and I've been dropping um, albums. So, I, I, like, I honestly, honestly, it, I would have to look through the banners, but if you say you were a sponsor, salute to you. Let's get to this topic yeah. right now. The Clark Doll Test, I'm revisiting uh, this in 2023. I'm asking the question. I don't know. Does low self-esteem play any part in, in, in the uh, the temperature of young black people? I'm focused on young black people today and those tests back okay. in the days. Go ahead. Okay. I'm a millennial. Okay. I'm in my 20s. And I studied some of this at the university level. The Clark study was famous. You know what I mean? It even went hand in hand with 
Bandora, Bandora's mm. attachment theory studies, right. the Jungian story, mm -hmm. and of course uh, the Jungian theories, and of course the Freudian theories as well too. Right. Um, this Clark story right over here, like it does tie hand in hand with low self esteem, and it the low self esteem is predicated through propaganda, primarily through colonist propaganda. Okay. And there's no there's no pushing a button on that unless if you decide to actively take a role and mitigate that propaganda and put the anti-medicine to it. So, for example, stop right there. I like what you said. Okay. I like how you executed that. You're a college man. Yes, we've spoken before. You said, yeah, yeah, I've, I've gotten I've gotten the. Um, the, colon, the, the degrees from the from the U.S. to colonize the U.S. and okay. they, they haven't did anything for three fifths right. of a mil. Stop right, yeah, stop right there. Stop. Okay, so what you, in my mind, described was how it plays out. You know, the the propaganda with with the the the, the preteens and the teens. Or did I misunderstand you? What you said about the propaganda and how it manifests. And plays out. No? Yes? You hit that on the nail with exactly what I said. You understand me. And okay. there is a way to mitigate the propaganda. And that's okay. to put an, an anti, like, anti-propaganda machine into your head. Kind of like, you know, how, um, how uh, what is it? How, who came out with that? I believe it was Public Enemy came out with the song Anti-Nigger Machine. Or it was mm -hmm. an insert on one of their albums. Right. You put an anti-colonist machine. So when you're on Instagram or whatever, say you're a male like myself and you scroll in or like you scroll in the porn pages or whatever, mm -hmm. you, you make it strictly an Afrocentric thing. You know what I mean? You, don't, you do not indulge in any other ethnicities or any of that. You see what I'm saying? You make it strictly an Afrocentric thing. Mm -hmm. um, say you're over there and you're, going, and you're going to the cinema. You know what I mean? Just like on the, on the song Burn Hollywood Burn mm -hmm. off of Fear of a Black Planet, which was a, a public enemy album. Um, and how Big Daddy Kane expressed on the record in a conversation with Ice Cube and Chuck D that he was only going to see films like Black Caesar and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? You okay, now hang on a second. Let me jump in. We're having a good discussion here. Um, you know, society has evolved, but if you ask me and others, and uh, some would disagree, um, up, up, the black working class, the black upper class has, uh, for the most part, b now been interwoven into America. Interwoven. So, so yeah, so we see more, you know. Interwoven as the underclass, sir. You're right, yes. As the underclass. Yes, yes. The uh, permanent. Give me a second. Give me a second. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a slow thinker. You're, you're right, the underclass. So, yes, we see melanated faces sit now sitting with uh Stephen a smith i was in the gym this morning he's sitting there talking mm -hmm. there's there's two black chicks i don't know who the fuck they are but you know they're black faces so we should be happy about that i guess but um um <laughs> so with being I, I really don't like Stephen a smith man he's a clown okay but but hang, hang on that that has nothing to do with my point give me a second i'll get to the point but okay. now but now does that do more damage in the long run because there should be five networks like BET. I mean, I mean, not like BET, but in theory, five black, yeah, not five, not like BET, yeah, not like not. BET. <laughs> five yeah, black no networks, no and, there, and there should be people just as big as Stephen A. Smith doing a sports commentary. Am I crazy? You have the floor. You're not crazy, but the thing about it is, is that stay. You came with that proposal to the orders that run Western society and have heavy influence mm -hmm. all over the world. Right. They are going to take that proposal and twist it and be like, yo, you want five networks like BET, yeah. then we'll give you five networks of cooning and buffooning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to give you um, proper Afrocentric people yeah. for those who are coming up within the society to yeah. look up to or to look towards they're going to make them look goofy right i mean right, even right. i was just reading you don't need news in the morning you, you need a bet uncut 2.0 <laughs> 
You need the Wayans brothers. Never mind, you know, a, a network like CNN. That ain't what you need. Um, I, I want you to finish up, man. I got to take other callers and I got to shift gears. Here, but go ahead and finish up. CVR, please. Right. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I enjoyed those shows, to be honest. <laughs> like that type of programming. I enjoyed that programming growing up. But, you know, like I, I, to, this, to this day, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going to lie. You know what I mean? I'll scroll on the feed. You know what I mean? A little tumble feed. Get my talking videos on and all that. But at oh the my end of the God. day, like I'm, I'm still going to go and investigate Muhammad. I'm still going to go and investigate, you know, the ideologies that come from Afrocentric people that are intellectuals <laughs> and not on the cooning and buffooning right, commercialized right. side. And I think if that has to deal with the fact that I was raised <laughs> up in hip hop culture right, right. and the, the birth of hip hop culture, which was primarily about knowledge and having a sense of pride for yourself right. before it became commercialized. Right, so that's right. what inspired me to go and get into, you know, actual intellectual okay. when it came down to okay. other Afrocentrics such as myself. Right. Uh, Steve, we, I have to take other calls, man. Thank you. Emails. I got to take other calls. Thank Salute, you, man. Star. Salute. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. CVR tapping. Great call. Great call. Bussy Matrix. I got your donation. Thank you. I don't know where you're going, sir. We're having a good discussion here. What is Jesus Christ? He's talking about low self-esteem and selling bussy. In Atlanta, down, I don't know. Hey, man, thank you. Thank you for the donation. Jesus. What television show did he mention? Something, what did he mention? Something triggered in my mind. You know what show I didn't like? Just let me go side note for a second. Well, I, I didn't hate it. I just... Good times. Good times. John Amos, great actor. Uh, Esther Roll. Uh, 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 Ralph Carter played uh, Michael Evans, J.J. Walker, of course, and uh, Thelma. I, I didn't like that show. I, I always wondered, wh why are the walls dirty? Does that, does that sound crazy? Why were the walls inside the apartment by, by, by the doorknob? Why, why was it like finger smudges? I said, what is this? That was crazy. Anyway. Um, Troy, I got your other donation. Thank you for tapping in, sir. Yeah, I'm just... Th thank you for um, the donation about yesterday's show, Troy. You know, last night... <laughs> I shouldn't have done a show last night about reparations if, if anybody didn't see last night's show. I had to chop out some of that show. I had, certain things had to be edited out. It was too late, number one. Number two, the audience wasn't ready. And sometimes I have to post things in the community section so you can know where I'm trying to go. But the discussion of reparations and the um, Oakland, California... Well, the California task force in Oakland, California, this past Saturday. I thought it was a good topic, but it was just too late. So I take the blame for trying to put that on the table too late. You know, and people are sipping, smoking. And just want to say that. Um, also, for those who don't know, with regards to today's research topic, hold on a second. Um, Self-esteem, right? For those who uh, need a more detailed definition of uh, low self-esteem, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, negative social comparisons, trouble asking for help, worry and doubt, difficulty accepting compliments, negative self-talk, fear of failure, poor outlook of the future, lack of boundaries, being a people pleaser. That's low self-esteem, according to Wikipedia, okay? Guys, sit tight on the phones. I just wanted to 
address some of those things. And uh, I'm not going to be here too much longer. It was just a, a, a research show. I wanted to get some clarification on some of the ideas I was... Uh, uh, yes, call in now. Alex, call now. Hold on a second. What number are you calling from? Got a sponsor who wants to call in. Okay. In the meantime, let's go to area code 215. Hey, good evening, 215. How are you? Hey, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Hey. Who's, who's this? Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Good to hear from you. What's cracking? What's shaking? But, hey. Um, I was over here, you know, thinking in regard. There was a lot said. Mm -hmm. A lot said. Um, <laughs> it's the same narrative, in my opinion, of finger pointing. Okay. And, of course, um, placing blame where there is no blame. Okay. In regards to the condition of, uh, say, young people and just black people entirely. Okay. You already know, uh, you know, my angle, how I view things. Well, uh, well, well no, I, I yeah, don't. I, I, I don't. Um, I don't want to predict what callers say and or think. I appreciate you calling in. Um, my platform is open for most people as, as long as it's not, you know, excessive trolling or... or things said uh, too mal by way of being malicious. What are your thoughts? This is just a theory of mine with regards to the Clark Dahl test uh, from the 30s, 40s, and I'm just trying to see if there's any correlation to low self-esteem in today's young black people, you know, of course. idolizing white people, of course. Um, thinking that other black people or black dolls are the bad ones. I'm just thinking out loud. What say you? Yeah, of course there's a link, um, okay. and that doll test was in the 40s, correct? They started in the 30s, but it picked up traction in the 40s. 30s, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So from that point up until 2023, no progress at all. Mm. Okay. Um, <laughs> that speaks volumes. Come on. And, um, you know, I'm, I was sitting here listening to the commentary, and I'm like, well, who has the more – more influence in the household and on the minds of innocent children who is it the media or is it directly who's in contact with the children right okay um in terms of the view of the children i'm so sorry to tell you the media does not do this damage this is in-house um and in most cases um from what i've literally seen that is common throughout the culture uh dare i say the womb of the race itself Please, and you are, a I've seen it. you are a black woman for those who don't know, yes? Yes, I am. Continue, please, continue. Um, so we, I understand, and now it has really hit the fan in terms of the violence. Um, these children, they, they have been beat down mentally and spiritually for so long because it just wasn't them. It was indeed generations um, prior to them, it's just been a very calculated, deliberate dysfunction um, that has been going on. And now with these children, they don't care if they live or die right. and take you with them or right. take anyone with them. Yeah. Um, it, they're very dangerous. Um, it, it's fine. It, you don't know. You don't know. And there's and what's interesting, there are the ones that are violent and unpredictable, but then there's ones who are inde indeed breaking free. It's fascinating right. to see those who are coming up. They don't have the, tank, the, the same, excuse me, uh, in feeling of inferiority and looking at black as less than in them. So right. I'm looking at two different spectrums that's going down now. Um, but, you know, um, you know, the deviant ones amongst us got exactly what they wanted. It was all a setup. I get it. Yeah, and if I can just um, j jump in with regards to what you've just said, um, I I'm glad you're saying this as opposed to me because a lot of times the messenger is hated, you know, who brings uh, the, the message. Um, I have to explore these things, being that I'm from a different generation. I have to take my time, let other people speak. I mean, in my mind, I, I think I pretty much know <laughs> what the issue is, but I'm not sure it can be resolved. Um, have you ever it's been... A, it will never... The, 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 the woman, Janet, was talking about a solution. Mm. Even she knows that it's too late for that. Okay. The, damn, the men, <laughs> the product in terms of the people, right. in terms of the people, 
these these men didn't just sprout out of nowhere right. the way they are, just like the women. Right. They were raised and groomed to be what they became, to be what they are. Mm. So, the, no, there is no solution when you deliberately raised and groomed this tyranny <laughs> based very on, well you know, said. jealousy. Very well said. Go ahead. No, very well said. Um, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Did you see the video of this uh, female um, in Tennessee, a high school student, pepper spraying? Yes, I saw it. A black female stu- high school student pepper spraying uh-huh. the white teacher because the teacher. he took uh-huh. her phone. Pepper sprayed him twice. Uh-huh. Give me my phone. Give me. Give my phone. Give me. I said, whoa, uh-huh. <laughs> whoa. That was crazy. And when I seen okay. it, I recognized the spirit that not only raised her, but she embodied. Mm. Huh. <laughs> I seen it. Yeah, I seen him. Yeah. I, I mean, it's making my face hot right now, the audacity. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, um, we have to pretend and act as though we don't see her future. Right, right. Baby mama hood, right. baby mama hood. She's already there. But we want to sit here and act as though we don't know where this comes from. We're going to blame that on BET or any other, uh, you know, media outlet? Yeah. Or is that from the womb or the wombs with an S Plural. from which she comes from that yeah. she has embodied? Right, right, right. That is normal behavior, n- n- not to be accountable. I want what I want, and I want it now. Right. I'm, I'm, I, I shouldn't have to be disciplined or even have self-control. Mm. So it's already embedded in her. So, you know, I already see the baby mama hood. Uh, good luck to her. No offense. I'm not wishing or hoping that on her. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, but um, it is what indeed it is. And there's no other distraction. Yeah. Um, who did she, who and what did she embody that made her say? But then again, I've seen, been looking at other videos of grown black women. Uh, would a coincidence conduct themselves in the same way? Nobody can tell them right. no, stop or don't, right. or you're wrong. And everyone's scared of them. Yeah. Can you believe that, Star? Well, I well just, I'm, I, listen, I, I grip up on a regular. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not looking for trouble, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to let Mammy, Mammy get the jump on me, you know. But, um, hey, thank I have you. To, as a woman, I have to play a different game with them. Right, right, Because right. the ball is in their court. <laughs> the ball, everyone will see them out of control and in a manic rage. Yeah. Yeah. Very well um, said. Beyond psychotic. And with your, every, all everyone knows is they don't want to be on the receiving end of their tyranny. So if she targets an innocent woman like myself, well, it's like, sucks to be you. All right. Um, but everybody's scared of them. But, okay. you know, like I said, <laughs> um, I'll close with karma's here. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> and Sarah. I love it. Um, all of it is going to backfire, indeed. Thank you very much, Thank Star. you. Great Take to care. hear from you. Take care now. Bye. All right. Sarah tapping in. That was a good call. Sometimes you have to let other people put things on the table. If I say it, ah, I just hate on black women again. Yeah. Um, sit tight, 447. I'll be right there. Sit tight. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything in my um, live chat. Wicked Hebrew, got your donation. Thank you for tapping in, sir. Generational trauma can really be passed genetically. Um, I did some research on that. Uh, I'm not disagreeing with you, (laughs) but thank you for your donation. Um, Alex, I'm coming to you next. Sit tight. Sir Shy tapping in. Okay, send me a link, Sir Shy, please. I need that link via email whenever that thing happens. Thank you for your donation, Sir Shy. Um, coming emails. Okay, I don't know who this is. Somebody said that has nothing to do with my show. Thanks so much, Alex. Good to hear from you, man. Are you there, Alex? Uh, sorry for the wait. Thank you for your um, notification. Where's my sponsor, Alex? Greetings, star. Hey, man. All, all good, all good. Good to hear from you. I'm, I'm uh, looking my for... My apologies for the last... Um, no, no. Off the last it's time, fine, man. it's fine. I'm looking for your information as as we're going to be talking here. Um, okay, wh- whilst I'm looking for that, where do you want to start? And pr- make sure we promote your books, first and foremost, please. Oh, yeah, sure. Um... Well, as you know, I, I write the, uh, the I have short stories going on right now and uh, poetry books. And um, I think with the short stories, I guess you could say it's a crime thriller. 
um, with a hint of romance. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the way the story goes is uh, the, the 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 main character is um, you know it's almost like there's an, a there's a there's a a danger of violence. There's danger of uh, danger, uh, a situation of danger mm -hmm. ongoing, and um, it's kind of like an extended party that he's not privy to or he's not aware of. Hey, hang on a second, Alex. I'm looking for your. Actually, I'm looking for your showrunner, um, and I don't see it now. There's a link in my community section uh, to your books. Um, I'm gonna have to get your showrunner on um, a little bit later. But uh, t tell people where they go for your books. Uh, let's do that first. Yeah, sure. Uh, if you could go on um, Amazon, uh, just type in Alex Murdoch. Mm -hmm. uh, with this CK at the end, not the CH, um, M U R D O C K, Alex Murdoch. Okay, I'll get, um, I'll get that the, corrected. That's the place to find my book. Yeah, I'll get that corrected. Okay, so are you want to jump in on, on the topics? Um, the Clark Dahl test, you up to speed on the, those experiments dating back decades? Yeah, yeah I, I'm, a, I'm aware of the experiment. I, I think it's, a, it's quite an intriguing question you asked, to be honest with you. Oh. But um, it if I if I was to if I was to speak on that, I would say, as we know, you know, the subconscious is kind of like a sponge, even for especially for children, and you know, <clears throat> when you're in a certain environment as we are all the time, and you see certain things, and you might not pay, you might learn to not pay attention to it, but it doesn't mean you're not, it's not being um, you're not having a certain perception of it and mm -hmm. absorbing that information. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I think to an extent. You do have a you do make a big point about that inferiority that we're talking about, and let's not let's be honest. Like you know the uh, the fact that we can still mention the brown paper bag situation, mm -hmm. and there's relevance to it. You know that kind of speaks to what certain children might grow up. Yeah. Of color. Well, well, the actual test again, which is uh, at the crux of my uh, uh, discussion here uh, th this uh, evening. Now we're in the evening. Um, I'm just curious uh, if, in modern times, the the, the tests still hold weight because, you know, it was uh, once upon a time deemed that the, the that the tests were a um, a result of segregation. So therefore, they they decided to put children together, black and white. Uh, but now times have changed and we see a, a much more traumatic outcome. So I don't know if it, if it helped at all or, or, or maybe we should go in a different direction. Well, society more so. Go ahead, please. I, I, think, um, I think that that test is still, is the, it, the results of it, what it showed is still relevant today okay. for sure and that's why i mentioned the whole um brown paper bag thing because that's such an old concept when you think about you know what that that was insinuating pertaining to you know color itself mm -hmm. in in terms of society but you know when you think about the test that you're speaking of that's quite old as well but yeah. you know it still hold a lot of relevance and what it shows us mm -hmm. and indicating to you know how or how our children might see the world and uh, perceive their self within the world, yeah, you know, in yeah. terms of like hierarchy, societal retaining okay. type of thing. Okay. So, okay. yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. But yeah, there, there's definitely still relevance to that, I would say. Well, hey, man, thank you for tapping in. Um, I have your banner right here. Um, and it, do you want me to put on, on my screen, my showrunner, uh, your link tree information? Or, or is there a YouTube channel? What is it you want on my showrunner? Because I, I have to update some things here. Um, yeah, uh, if you could just do the, um, Instagram, YouTube, I'd say the, the, yeah, the Instagram, that's, that's what, that's the one. Yes. Okay. Can I ask you to email me the, the your Instagram link when we get off so that I can make sure I have it? Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you, man. Good to talk to you, Alex. And, uh, I, I think you were telling me about the, um, sorry to cut you off. You were telling me about the poetry last time that you, <laughs> you said you wrote. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that I wrote or that you wrote? Sorry? The poetry that I wrote or that you wrote? Which poetry? Uh, you, you, you were telling me about a poetry that, uh, the one poetry that you wrote. Uh, I, I didn't, that I didn't, was in the 80s. I was high on coke. That, 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 that was bullshit. That's... 
<laughs> yeah, that, that okay. I, I, I was uh, <laughs> writing to a female that I, I was going to, well, I don't even want to say what I was going to do to her, but uh, she ran off with some money, so I don't want to get into that, man. But hey, good to talk to you. Send me that link now, please, all right? No worries, Tom. Thank you. Thank, yes, thanks, sir. thanks for taking my call. Thank you. Okay. One of my sponsors, Alex. Okay. Okay. Back in the building. Star Report. Monday. Monday evening. We're having a good discussion. Yes, we are. Okay. This topic of discussion, uh, the Clark Dahl test revisited in 2023. And I'm asking about the premise of those uh, historical monumental uh, test low self low self esteem with regards to young black children picking uh, the little white dolls over the black dolls <clears throat> four dolls uh, to be uh, precise uh, the doctors okay um, we're asking the children black children doctors Kenneth and Mammy Clark asking them questions about which doll is the bad doll. And they all pointed to the black doll. That's the bad doll. Which doll is the nice doll? Pointed to the white doll. So yes, uh, the programming, the propaganda, you know, uh, played a big part, but at the same time, the test, just in case you're just now joining me, let me read something to you here from multiple sources. Uh, the Clarks <clears throat> provided proof that segregation gave African-American children a sense of inferiority. This is what the Clarks said, okay? Segregation gave the children a sense of inferiority. So that's how we, or this was the premise for what would then become the monumental Brown versus Board of Education, you know, ruling here in America that started integration in schools. How do you feel? Are you a parent? I would love to hear from you. I am not. My information, well, my comments here are limited. I can't say, you know, what's right, what's wrong, but uh, I urge you to chime in. Area code 703, sit tight. You're up next. 703, I'll be right there. Big J, I got your donation. <sighs> Not fitting so social norms equals low self-esteem. You're asking me or you're saying, sir? I don't know. But the Clark doctors, that's what they determined after doing multiple tests, research, observations, interviews. That's what they're saying, sir. If you don't know, please Google the Clark doll experiments. Okay, but thank you for your donation. Um, okay, got an email from Janet. Uh, okay. Thank you, Janet. We'll get to that later. Okay, and Alex, I got your information as well. Uh, King Kia got your donation via Cash App. Uh, salute to Cardi B, the queen of rap. Nikki washed. <laughs> I'll let that man have his say. Area code 703. Good evening. Are you there? 703, doing a research show. Yes. Yes, sir. What is good, sir? This is the this is the Mad Reek in Alkali City. Hey, man. Good to hear from you. What's cracking? What's cracking, brother? What's, I mean, what's cracking, star? What's cracking? Yeah, but pl please don't call me a brother. You and I have been having good co conversations. <laughs> um, where do you want to chime in, man? I paused myself. You see, I you see, I paused myself. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Do you want to chime in on the topic or something else? Uh, the Clark Dahl test revisited, uh, I, or the showrunner, or oh, the showrunner, yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm. I want to make. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want. I want to make a statement on a topic, but then I want to chime in on the Charlie Rock LD. Yeah, come on, man. Let's go. Yeah. So on this topic, um, yeah, you know the this this um experiment. It caused low self-esteem in, in the in the mind in the cultures for it, I, it's not a black and white thing. It's a culture thing. Are you understand? Because if you go to like New York City, where I was born and raised, where you you know where where you're from, in New York, 
you know. No, I'm from New Jersey. Uh, I, 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 I'm from New Jersey, born and raised. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Jersey. Uh, you know, brother and sister, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is is that uh, on the weekend, we, we know, we're known for, like, you know, knowing that a Friday means party night. Yeah, Friday, you got to go party. You got to go look good. You know what I'm saying? You want to look better than the next person. You know, if this person got a pair of Jordans, you want a pair of uh, Christian Louboutin. Mm -hmm. You understand? Uh, uh, our whole lives are, are, are based on us, you know, seeing what's on so this. What, what it's called, it's, it's a project. It's called Operation Mockingbird. It was, it was to, to take social media predictions and, and presume it into our brains. So that everything we see on TV, you know, we fantasize about, you know. So, you know, we see somebody, you know, um, driving a nice car. We want a nice car. We see somebody going on a vacation. We want to go on that. I, I got to jump in. Now, hang on a second. I got to jump in. N no, these tests were about race. <laughs> um, and, and they specified black children choosing the white babies, very, very descriptive. The information, the outcome, mm -hmm. and what led to the monumental uh, uh, court ruling, Brown versus Board of Education, this was about race. With all due respect, no, what, hang, hang on, hang on, with all due respect, are you trying to put some type of Latin narrative in there? This, this ain't it, homie. This ain't it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Where we going? No, no. What I, what I, what... <laughs> Come on. No, 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 sir. There's no Latin narrative. Okay. What, what I'm, what, what I'm, what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is, is um, the low self-esteem is you, you see it in the cultures. You know, you, if you go to a, a suburban neighborhood, a, a purse, you know, a, a area where, where you know, is is not so you know, culturized like, like New York City, you don't see a person fighting over wanting a better Birkin bag than the next one. You know, a, a better pair of Jordans. They need the yeah. Jordans on the day they okay. drop. Okay. You know? Well, listen, I hear you, man, but I'm, I'm focusing on what I, uh, what I have researched. I've, I'm, I've been very familiar with these tests, uh, and I'm revisiting this, and I'm just ask, asking the question, the low self-esteem, which was the premise of these, these doll tests in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, does it still have merit today? Um, I, I'm not really, you know, going down the rabbit hole of Hispanics right now. We, we've done that. We can do that again. But, but black children, um, I live in the Atlanta metro area. I'm, 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 I'm 59 now. I, I, I don't want to grip up on the water boys, but I have to. I'm, I'm driving. Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. Hang, hang on. I'm, I'm driving. I pull up to a goddamn stop sign. And the water boys come up to me. I got one little nigga kicking my Pirelli tire. I'm like, yo, yo, shorty, back up off me. Y you know, I mean, shit can go left fast, man. Um, but, but now, listen, let, let's focus on the black kids. Do you think, and I'm asking you, yeah, I'm asking you, a proud Puerto Rican, do you think that there's any correlation or am I just cuckoo? for Cocoa Puffs, and then we're going to go to um, Charlie Rock LD. Any correlation or no? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to say. It still holds merit to, the, to this day because, as you can see, you know, the low self-esteem, it's all around. When people want to compete against, you know, he got a better bag, he got a better car. I want that. I okay. want that. I want that. Gotcha. You okay. Understand? Okay. It, okay. It holds, okay. It holds merit big time. Okay. All right. Listen, I, I want you and I to shift gears, and I, I just want to be clear in case you didn't hear the show earlier. This is no shot at Joe. I don't remember if I even met uh, Charlie Rock LD. I've met so many entourages, so many people up the radio stations, and I'm not really trying to kick dirt on either party, but uh, Joe used to go see this guy for like 14 years in the penitentiary. Joe's a better man than me because I have never visited a nigga. Or a, or a Hispanic in the fucking penitentiary. You know, handle your handle. When you come out, no, I'm, there's, no there's not going to be a, a fucking uh, 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 a BMW. No, you're not getting a, a stack of uh, 10 racks. No, nah, no. Nah. I'll loan you a pistol. You know, feed yourself or off yourself. But I, 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 
I have to ask the question, why did Joe give this guy so much? I think he may have given him too much. With all due respect, Charlie Rock LD was not able to manifest from, from street cat to business guy. And then uh, the, the relationship really got nasty after 14 years of going to see this man in the penitentiary. Any insight, please? Any insight? Yes, sir. Come on. Um, the whole thing, the whole thing, Charlie Rock LD, you know, rest in peace. Rest in you peace. Know, official, right. Uh, right. Rest in peace. Right. Official, bro official Bronx hood native, you know what I'm saying? And he was one of the, the first, you know, um, people that started the terror squad, you know what I'm saying? He's the, he is one of the original founding fathers of the terror squad, yeah. you know? He lost our eye. He lost our eye for Fat Joe. You know, fighting for the terror squad. You know, anytime. You know, Fat I disagree. Somewhere, I disagree. And, you know, but go ahead. I disagree. He was. He was the Debo for Fat Joe. You know. Okay. If Fat Joe, if, if there was an altercation, and you know, uh, he saw that something was going to happen, and and they had to do a Fat Joe, he was going to jump up for the terror squad name, and he did that. He rode out for that name. He got locked up. He got locked up the, the, whole, the whole bit. Joe Joe gave him visits, so forth and so on. Promised him, uh, you know, 30 acres and a mule. When he came home, gave him, you know, a bottle of spring water and said, see you later. You understand? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Stop, stop, stop. Now, listen, I'm trying to be objective, but at the same time, I've been a boss all my life. I was never anybody's sidekick. I've never been a comedian. I never... Uh, uh, um, I never carried nobody's creative records. At some point, you have to take notice to the blueprint that I laid out for you if I taught you how to fish. I'm not going to feed you for the rest of your goddamn life. We used to say on the Star and Buck yeah, Wild Show, hang on, Star and Buck Wild Show, feed yourself or off yourself. I shut down shout-outs. Fuck out of here. I ain't giving no shout-outs to nobody who I knew in the streets. Fuck out of here. Call if you want. Call the police. Tell on me. You gets nothing. Now, I'm giving Joe credit for going to see that man 14 years. Holy shit. I, I, I wouldn't have done it. I, I don't visit niggas in the penitentiary. Um, I don't buy that whole thing of, yo, he lost an eye for Joe. No, he made a bad fucking decision in the penitentiary. And he, uh, he got his eye fucked up. You can't just put that on Joe. Joe says his eye... He lost his eye over uh, some some drugs. That's what Joe says. What do you think? Now the streets see it different. You understand? Eh. There, there, there's two ways to see it. Yeah. There, there, okay. There, there's a, Come on. There, you know, there, there's a probable way to see it, but there's also the way that the streets see it, and the streets see it different. The streets okay. see it like. There's a rapper right now online on TikTok. His name is... Don't, don't say nobody's name. I don't want to bring nobody into this. No, no, no. Alkaline, let's, let's keep this no, on. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not bringing him into this. No, he's a, no. He's I don't want to say nobody's name. No, no names. Let's keep this All right, no names. on no names. Charlie no, Rock no LD are. and Fat Joe. Condolences. He's gone now. He, yeah, yeah. he suffered a heart attack. Did Joe put up on his Instagram page, God don't like ugly? Was he talking about Charlie Rock? No, well, 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 see, you just uh, just completely changed from the narrative that I was trying to tell you. The, the uh, hater misses nothing. Uh, the, the hater misses nothing. Supposedly, that's what Joe said about I, Charlie I, I Rock. No, no, no. Come I on. <laughs> yeah, Come I, got on. You, I got you. Come on. I got you, Star. Come on. So, like I was saying, this, this, this TikToker, he put out a video saying his friend just came home from jail. Yeah. And what it showed, what he was doing was he was giving his friend stats. Oh, um, boom, boom, blessing him. This is for all the years. This is because you got locked up for my team. Okay. And he showed them. And this is what the this is what the streets are seeing that you're supposed to do for your mans when they come home. You see when Bobby Schmurder came home, uh, Quavo and Takeoff, they 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 they, they Bobby Schmurder was was um Schmoney Gang. He was he, he was amigos. Alkaline. So and Takeoff alkaline. Gave him a bag alkaline. Him, alkaline. I hear you. That yes, ain't sir. that ain't how I move. <laughs> If you go to the penitentiary, know, my bro, nigga. I'm just showing you what the street I is don't give at. a fuck. Alkaline, hang on, hang on a second. That shit don't mean nothing to me. If I teach you how to fish, you got to get it on your own. No, I'm not going to be yes, feeding your family, taking care of niggas. 
And then you come home talking slick. I at, agree. Talk, talking slick as if, you know, you the real nigga. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just an entertainer. Fuck out of here. Now, again, I'm not trying to take Joe's side, but, you know, I just, I got to ask the question, man. I mean, did, did Joe, Deeds, no, can, any, I, Deeds, can anybody confirm? I agree, I agree with you, Was son. Joe talking about Charlie Rock? He said, God don't like ugly. Now, let me ask you this. Let me just ask you this. I respect your input, your opinion. Folks, we're doing a whole Terror Squad uh, uh, discussion here. This is Alkaline, uh, Alkaline City, yes? Yes, sir, you already Alkaline know. City, official Puerto Rican on the line, my official Puerto Rican correspondent. Um, at what point was Charlie Rock LD supposed to turn his life around? You know, and, and, and evolve. You got to evolve. Go to the penitentiary is one thing. No, you, At what point? Come on. No, you're exactly right, Star. See, you know, uh, uh, for me, in, in your perspective, I see it that way. I see that every man got to stay on his, on his own two feet, right? But another, another person that feels that, you know, they put their, their life out for you and they took a bid for you and they come home, they they expecting a bag and they didn't get nothing. They're gonna show animosity. Right. So you know that Charlie Rock LD, right. his whole time he came home, he had that animosity. He started his his podcast. It was based off of animosity. Right. You know. And now that he's dead, now that he's dead and he showed that animosity, everybody thinks that oh, Fat Joe set him up and Fat Joe killed him. That's not uh, the narrative. He had a heart attack. That's not the narrative. He had a heart attack. You know he. He had the animosity towards Fat Joe, yeah, and everything like that, but he died of a heart attack. Your boy was eating hamburgers and pizza. You understand? Sheesh. You know, he, I, I, my name is Alkaline City. Right. I, I lived through a, a Dr. Savior life of health, you know, a life of, of eating non-congested food, food that feeds your cells and gives your body electrical energy. But when you're, when you're, feed, when you're feeding your body congested food and you're suffocating yourself, you're causing a death on your body. You're causing death to your arteries. Right, he right. caused death to his heart. He suffocated his heart. People can't, they can't fathom that. They can't grasp and understand that he died of a natural cause. He didn't die because of a fat Joe, you know, poisoned his burger. Yeah. Or something. Come on, bro. Is he, is he all, all that fucking you know por pork and grease? Now, now he was never um, um, uh, uh, Latin Kings. I remember he said he wasn't with them. And I, that was my people. I I. <laughs> Well, with King Tone and those guys. King Tone and I, I, you know, everybody knows we worked together in MTV Mailroom. Oh, okay. One day yes, ago, sir. hang on, Alkaline City, one day ago, Fat Joe sitting there with the big ass terror squad, the fucking diamonds flooded. God don't like ugly. Oh, I'm looking at it. Hold on a second. Let me print this out. God don't like ugly. Shit. You have the floor, sir. I think he's talking to the memory. Yeah, and, and so Charlie that, Rock, that's what people got to understand because that's, that's the conspiracy going around. Everybody thinks that Fat Joe Illuminati murdered Charlie Rock LD. No, no. You got to understand this guy, this guy, he was, old, he was old in age and he was unhealthy. Just like Big Pun. Big Pun, he mm. died because look how overweight Big Pun was. Do you think that his organs were going to survive any longer? They were suffocating. How old was Charlie Rock LD? How the organs work. How old was he, Charlie? Let me explain. Rock. How old what? was he? How old was Charlie Rock LD? He's younger than me. Charlie Rock LD, I don't, he, he was old. He was older than me. I'm, I'm 44 years old, and I'm, I know he had me by like a brick. I'm 59. How old was this man? Hold on a sec. <laughs> these, niggas, these niggas are dying younger than me. Age group. <laughs> oh, shit. He, oh, my God. He was probably in your age group star. I bet you, you I, can see I it. bet you he you was know, five he, years younger. I say this with all due respect. Holy shit. Adeeds, anybody. How old was Charlie Rock LD? I'm, I'm shaking in my boots. He had a fucking heart attack. I'm sitting here drinking every day. You got... <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You, Star, you got you to gotta look at a lot of these guys. You know, back in their days, if they, if they were shooting up or they were sniffing yeah. or they were smoking some crack or something up, listen... All of that is going to catch up to you one day if you don't change your life around and change your health. That's a health fact. That's a and fact. That's what these people don't. That's that, a fact. And that's what these people don't understand. They everything is Illuminati conspiracy, Illuminati this, Illuminati that. No, bro, change your health. The Illuminati is they put GMOs in your food, genetically modified organisms. They giving you hybridized fruits and vegetables. You don't know what you're eating. You don't know how to read ingredients. You know, 
You don't know how to feed your cells. You don't know what gives your body life. You're over there poisoning your body with carcinogens and, and toxinating your, your cells, and then you're blaming the Illuminati. Come on, bro. I don't, I don't, hold, I don't hold, hold on. Out. Outline City, hold in a second. Take a breath. Take a breath. I am in no rush. So I'm, I'm going to put a little, little effort into this. Okay, D says uh, but he's between 45 and 50. Holy shit. Here I am. Focism. Here I am after a liver transplant. <laughs> and old nigga star still drinking. These, these niggas are dropping like flies. What the hell? All right, so so um to, to wrap this up, uh, Alkaline City, and I appreciate you taking the time. Um at some point, let me just say this and then I want you to finish up. There's no disrespect to the memory of Charlie Rock LD. And I'm not just taking Joe's side. I'm not just taking Joe's side, but you know. Street's got no love, you know? We, we ran together, we, we did this, you know? But at some point, you have to, you have to grow. You have to be able to, to, to keep getting it. I mean, in, in, the, in, the, in the Cosa Nostra, the mafia, you know? You have to always be an earner. You have to earn. You stop earning, they kill you. They kill you because you know too much. Go ahead and finish up. Go ahead and finish and up. And you absolutely, yeah, you, and I'm going to land with this. You absolutely right, 100,000% facts, you know. You know, Charlie Rock LD, what he had towards Fat Joe, and I'm not a, I'm not running with Fat Joe because I'm, I'm not a Fat Joe supporter. I know. You know, I know, I know about a, a lot of the bullshit he does, <laughs> and I know people who done ran up on him, and I'll get into that in the future, that choked him up and punched <laughs> out his brother and everything like that. But besides Jesus. that, I know he's a scumbag, he does scumbag things. And I'm not involved with the scumbagnism. Okay. But I'm not going to say that just some, just because somebody had animosity towards him, right. it was the Illuminati that he poisoned them and killed them. Gotcha. That's just some bullshit. All right. Hey, All right, peace out. Peace hey, out. hey, hey Y'all listen. Have a great day. Good to hear from you, man. But you and I have to have a discussion one day uh, uh, about Lincoln Center because a lot of people, you know, they they they, they talk about uh, black and brown in New York City, and before Lincoln Center was built, what was that, 14, 16 acres where they had all those projects and all the black and Puerto Ricans lived over there. You know what I'm talking about? Or am I, am I going back too far? Lincoln Center, New York City. I, no, no. You know, I know about everything about Lincoln Center, but the, the, the um, progression before it right. and the foundations before it, I... I'll definitely look into. Email me, and then we'll, we'll, we'll you know, we'll get it. Well, yeah, do a little research because you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, again, I'm as old as dust, but you know, there's a lot of history there, and 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 that uh, they filmed the original West Side Story over there that won all those goddamn Academy Awards, and 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 uh, that that area is not too often spoke about in, in the the growth of of uh, black and brown relations. Some people say. Uh, um, you know, uh, 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 I don't know. Just let, let's come back to it. But Lincoln Center, the history before before it was uh, built, Lincoln Center, the projects there. Okay. Yeah, you got it, bro. Um, email me, and then you know we'll take it from there. Thank you, salute, man. Thank you, Alkaline City. Thank you. Got. You, okay. You too. Bye bye. Okay. <sighs> okay, we're having a good discussion this uh, afternoon, evening. I'm not taking anybody's side. And salute to the homie, man. Cuban Link. Cuban Link, good guy, man. Um, he did a post on Instagram talking about uh, Charlie Rock LD. I don't know what their relationship was toward the end. Damn, Fat Joe said, God, don't like ugly. Sheesh. Let me print this out. You got the big fucking, the big chain on his neck. Hold on a second. Terror Squad. Guys, I don't remember, you know, when Charlie Rock LD went to the penitentiary when he came home. I, I, don't, I don't study all that shit. I know a lot of you guys do, and I, I respect that, you know. A lot of you guys know more about street shit than you do the, guy, the goddamn Bible or or anything by, by way of economics or, you know, shit that can really help you. But um, 
Uh, I just had to say that. Mm, there he is, Fat Joe, sitting in a chair, left hand up on the table. Big terror squad fluttered in diamonds. Is, is that platinum or white gold? God don't like ugly. That's all it says. Mmm. Niggas dying. Niggas gonna keep on dying. Guys, what's up with Joe's beard? Is, is that... I'm not trying to clown, but is that his real beard? Or did he... Is that some type of... Uh, whatever they call that shit, you know? Fucks up with the beard. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta change things around. Whew! Seven seven three. Sit tight. You're up next. Seven seven three. Okay, they're talking crazy. That's spray paint, old nigga. That's that's what they're saying. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> can't you tell? <laughs> no, I can't. I didn't know what the fuck that shit is. <laughs> oh, man. All right, P. Charlie Rock LD, man. I'm not sure if I met that guy or not. I just don't remember. <laughs> I used to be up in the Bronx. <laughs> well, just for decades, I'll just say that. Always had good relationships with the <laughs> Bronx niggas. M more so the Hispanics. I didn't really fuck with, you know, uh, the blacks in the Bronx. They, just, they, they were always trying to beat you on the coke. You, you know the story already. All right. Um, on the screen, please check out my website. Well, one of my websites, shot97.com. Um, we, we, we removed six songs from the playlist, songs that, you know, ran their course. We're uploading uh, 20 new songs this Saturday, okay? Uh, Rory, going to be needing to talk to you. And Desmond Fox, we need to talk to you. Uh, let's try and connect you to uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Rory and Desmond Fox, okay? Um, oh, Nick Nick says, Today's beard is not yesterday's beard. <laughs> Area code 773. Uh, good evening. We're talking about the Clark Doll test. Uh, are you up to speed? 773. Oh, uh, yes, sir. How, how you doing today, sir? I'm good, man. How about yourself? Thank you for holding. No, no, no problem. Hey, I like the, uh, the, the current tempo and, uh, Thank you. and adultness that's been in your recent shows. I, I appreciate it a lot. Um, Thank you. But Thank you. going back to, but going to this uh, Clark doll uh, test. Mm -hmm. Here's what I wanted to share, and I don't know if you'll see the same see the same thing. Hey, you and I, you're the only other person I know that agreed with uh, Kevin Durant's mom emasculating him on national TV. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But but back to this Clark. Uh, but back to the overall. This has to do with a lot of the colorism in our community. You would think that it would have been eradicated by now, but. It seems to me the biggest culprits of it is black media. Hmm. Black media worse than any other media. And Explain. I'll give you an example. Explain. Explain. <clears throat> when you have an African-American movie, right, black writers, black directors, 99% of the time, the female lead, especially in a romantic sense, is going to be a fair-skinned black woman. You can look at Black Dynamite. You can look at Players Club. Okay. Those are just two examples off the top of my head. But generally, for, for the most part, there are some exceptions. Me along being about the darkest, they'll have a black female lead character. Okay. Now, on the contrary, right, when we look at white media, A, they're quicker to put a dark-skinned woman in the lead faster than we are. I'll give you examples. Good point. That, uh, I don't know if you guys saw True Blood. True Blood, it was a show on, on cable, and again, the, the black female lead character, very dark skinned. I'll Google Beautiful. it. I'll Google and, it. Yep. Hey, even, uh, what's the other one with the zombies? Uh, I forgot what that show's name. Uh, yeah. uh, the, 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 the Walking Dead, their lead black woman, dark skinned woman with dreadlocks. Okay. She's their lead woman. When we do it, mm -mm. no, you, you, you already know the complexion that we're going to propagate. Hmm. 
And as well, another uh, example of black people doing this in media, you look at the Breakfast Club with Charlemagne and, uh, and DJ Envy, and who are you, two black people, you're hearing this light-skinned, dark-skinned commentary all day, every day. I think we're the biggest per, uh, proponents and perpetuators of that, uh, of that colorism. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm just, again, thinking out loud. I was talking to myself this morning, and somewhere around um, 11 a.m., I, I, I decided to address the Clark Dahl test. It, it wasn't, you know, something that I've been working on for a couple of days. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I thought about it, uh, because, again, I live here in the Atlanta metro area, and I just, I don't feel safe. I live in Woodstock, which is really, really nice. But when I ride into other uh, towns or counties, I'm like, man, it's just, it's just not a good feeling. And um, uh, the, the, the premise of the, 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 the Clark Dahl test was that um, low self-esteem derives from segregation, now, here we are in 2023. Atlanta is popping. It's lit. It's predominantly black. And I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering, well, is it low self-esteem? What is the issue with crime, home invasion, shootings, and other things? I, I don't know. I'm not a parent. Any, any insight? Are you a parent? Uh, am, am I uh, off the, my rocker? What do you think? Uh, no, no, you're you're not off your rocker. Uh, I, again, I, I live in San Diego. Okay, I coach football. Okay, you know what I'm saying. I coach football. So this is how I get to these young, young black kids, young black men, right? Hey, the problem is they ain't got daddy in the house. Okay, that's that's no that's problem numero uno. Okay, and again, is we have certain uh, and to me that brings on the the issues that are associated with low self esteem. Okay, and. I'm not even going to push the low self-esteem. I'd say really low self-awareness. These kids aren't being taught their history. Uh, they don't know who Elijah Muhammad is. They don't know who um, Marcus Garvey is. They're not taught none of that. Uh, but they're taught to protest. And, again, we've had that talk before as well. So um, it's a certain calmness and uh, integrity that's going to come with knowing who you are and not having to have some jazzed up, interpretation of uh, African history or African American history. No, our history is what it is. We're still people. We're still intellectual and you don't have to be boxed in, mm -hmm. but everything else in society, in, in my humble opinion. And again, I'm not looking at the, the, the prominent society. I'm not looking at white society. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at our society. Okay. If, if I could interject for a second. Okay. So Go ahead. if the Clark Dahl test says that uh, segregation uh, caused a sense of inferiority. Here we are now in 2023. Homeschooling amongst black families is up. We did that show a month or so ago. That was, you know, a show that people chimed in. Um, people are, are promoting by, 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 from black businesses, uh, uh, the promotion of black schools and things like that. Um, were, were the test quote unquote wrong? at one point in our society and should uh, 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 should people focus more on segregation now? I'm just asking. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just asking. Understood. Hey, again, I, I'm not going to pretend to be um, as educated or smarter than those doctors, but I, I would say this. My assessment is that test was quite timely. Okay. And maybe in a time, right. it, it rang true. Right. But in 2023, we got black generals. We have black had a black president. Mm -hmm. We have black congressmen. There is literally in America there is no ceiling that we haven't already shattered. Mm -hmm. And in all actuality, we shattered these ceilings. I got a grandfather that was a, a judge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and this is he became a, a judge very early on in the state of Indiana, as a matter okay. of fact. So, hey, the, in my opinion, and I've, I've talked this victim stuff before. I think we put our own mental barriers around us due to our history here. Okay. Okay. This is my opinion. Hey, I no. appreciate the oh, call. Uh, hang on. Have we spoke about San Diego before? Because I just, I was out there. Did we talk about that? Yeah, yeah. We talked about that last okay. time I called. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, well, what is that uh, that area called? Uh, the something district uh, where they, people hang out and it's down there by the, the, the Padres. Uh, um, oh, the gas lamp. Gas lamp district. Yeah. I didn't really hang out there at night because I wasn't trying to, like, you know, 
be doing too much on the road trip, but I drove through there. Really, really impressive. It's really impressive, San Diego. And then I went across the uh, the bridge. I forget the name of that place where, where the U.S. Naval uh, Aviation uh, um, place is. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Coronado Bridge. I yep. went. I went there. Um, 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 I hung out in uh, Mission Bay Park with uh, <laughs> with the Slores and the Tweakers. <laughs> I had a great time. As you should. Yeah, I had a great time. And then when I was driving back um, to Long Beach, what's the name of that goddamn church with, with the really pointy, pointy uh, t- temple? Like, you know what I'm talking about? That white church on the yeah, right? yeah, it's it's right up the five when you connect uh, to the eight oh five. I Ooh. forgot the name of that. I'm from Chicago, but yeah, no, that's a pretty church. I, uh, it's, it's nice. It's nice out here. I but don't tell out. everybody. We don't want the niggers coming out. Oh, here. oh we don't need that. <laughs> we listen, don't need that. Respectfully. Well, listen, I got off at the exit and I, I took some footage of that church. That, that is, I forget the name of that church, man. But uh, I, I enjoyed myself. Long story short, man. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. <laughs> All right, man. Have a great day. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> anybody know the name of that church? I forget. Damn, he said, don't promote it. We don't want the niggers out here. Shit. Good God Almighty. Zell912, I got your donation. Thank you for tapping in. Star, your son Academics is on demon time when it comes to his beef with, with uh, Spready Gibbs. Salute to my nigga, Ack. <laughs> Freddie Gibbs is a good guy. He came on the Star and Buckwild show. I think that was 2010. He's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, but that's, you know, their beef is none of my, my business. Uh, TJ says, Star, of course, esteem plays a part. Look at the uh, Sukihanas mm, and sexy reds of the world. They are the underbelly of our society. Miss Power B, I got your donation. Thank you for tapping in. Seeking identity, self-knowledge, and self-revelation can undo miseducation. Emulating whiteness, hold on a second, let me fix this, has us missing our mark and blaming everything around us. Very well said. This has been a good discussion today, folks. I, I wasn't expecting this many calls, to be honest with you. I'm going to shut it down now. Thank you for uh, chiming in. It was just a, a research show. I do these, as you know, in the afternoons, evenings. Um, I urge you, if you have not, to look at the, the Clark Dahl test, historical uh, Dahl test from doctors Kenneth and Mammy Clark. They were a couple. Okay, they started conducting these tests in the 30s and uh, picked up traction in the 40s. The psychological effects on young black children and, and the, the, uh, the self-esteem issues that uh, the test did, test did find to be at the root, at the root of the, uh, the test, Okay. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Um, Let me get some sponsors on the screen. And I will see you tomorrow, okay?